and set my set me high up on a rock. Then my head would be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his table will I sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, O oh Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, will I seek. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. He who walks righteously and speaks what is right. Who rejects gain from extortion and keeps his hand from accepting bribes? Who stops his ears against plots of murder and shut his eyes against contemplated evil? This is a man who will dwell on the heights, who will be, whose refuge will be the mountain fortress. His bread will be supplied. And water will not fail. The Lord, there the Lord will be our mighty one. It will be like a place of broad rivers and streams. No galley with oars will ride them. No mighty ship will sail them. For the Lord is our judge. The Lord is our lawgiver. The Lord is our king. It is he who will save us. God is our refuge and strength and every ever present help in trouble. The name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and are saved. Lord, we have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you were brought forth the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting. You are God. Let us pray. Father, we worship you today. We give you glory. We give you praise. We honor you, God. And God, today we recognize that you are the giver of life and the taker of life. We recognize, God, that we owe our survival to you. It is because of you, why we live. You are our creator and our sustainer. And God, we thank you for loaning, sharing to us today. And God, as we celebrate his life, God, we thank you for all that you have blessed him with, God. And we thank you for the many lessons we have learned from his life, God. And we come in this service into your hands, God. And we ask, God, that you would direct. We ask that you would be glorified in everything that we do today. In Jesus' name, amen. Remain standing as we join and sing the hymn, It is well with my soul. Thank you. 
our death is never easy. Death means separation. And it doesn't matter how old, how young a person is. Death is never easy. But we thank God that we serve a God who is a God of all comfort. And I would like to really extend my condolences to the bereaved family. And I pray that God will give you strength in these difficult times. In this difficult season, may you experience God who is the God of all comfort. At this time, we'll have a poem that will be read by Shernel Dollars. Shernel Dollars here. Shernel. All right, if Shernel isn't here, we will skip and go on to a mother's message and that we read by Semisha Arrington Mercury. Kamisha, sorry, Kamisha Arrington Mercury. At this time, we'll have our first scripture reading, and that scripture reading will be taken from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 to 8, and that will be read by Rosa Van Loo. And a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to gain 
and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. I just want to say that Seki was not just a relative. He was my friend, even though there was so many years between us. He called me auntie. And he was always so loving. We shared some real good times together. This was a terrible shock. One that will take a very long time for me to get over. May he rest in peace. And the Bible declares that there's a time for everything. A time to born and a time to die. And that is the sad reality of life. That death is part of our lives. And as I said, it's really a difficult, a hard thing to deal with. But it's a reality that we have to live with. At this time, we have a song selection by Jibisia Charles. Is Sharna here? Sharna Dawa's here? Okay, we'll move along and we'll have our second scripture reading. Will be taken from Matthew chapter 11, verse 20 to 30, and this will be done by Monel Malcolm. Matthew 28, Matthew 11, 20 to 30, and it'll be done by Monel Malcolm. Amen. And that's the assurance that we have from God's word. That when we go through difficult times like these, then we can find rest in the Lord. He invites us to come and he said, come unto me, all who are laboring and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. At this time we have our second hymn, our second hymn. Oh, yes. Um, sorry about the, the brother's message from by Kenon Bob. So we have Kenon Bob coming and reading the, bro the brother's message. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Today, we are here to honor my brother, Seike, as everybody knows him. Having a, having a brother growing up wasn't always the easiest. Having a brother, having a brother growing up wasn't always the easiest. But as we get older, I realize I truly had a partner in crime, good crime. Someone to always have my back and support me. Say he was very generous, loving, dedicated to his family. He was always there at the job of a heart if you needed anything. He taught me a lot growing up. How to ride a bike, play marbles, fly kites, and other stuff. A big brother would teach a younger brother growing up. That's just who he, who he was. A loving soul. Always there for everybody and for his family. The world is truly never will never be the same without him. My big brother is not around anymore.
but I will, I will have his memory close to my hand for the rest of my days. never easy, but we can find strength, we can find rest in our God. And this time we now have the hymn, When the Roll is Called Up Yonder. So we invite you to stand. that you need to ask yourself this afternoon when that role is called up yonder would you be there would you be there and death like this are lessons for us to ensure that when that role is called up yonder we will be there at this time we'll have the Father, and we have a message by the Father, Sidney Bob Jr. Well, thanks for everyone for coming out. I, I feel if I die, I will not see so much people. There's a lot of people here to support show today. Um, Sean, when, well, he's the one who made me know I can have children because he was the first. Uh, 
He was very kind-hearted, very given, you know who he is. He doesn't know how to hate. He only knows how to love. And he will give he will give away so. Sometimes I think even his neighbors will exploit his kindness because that's who he is as a person. Uh, he wasn't just my son. He was the son of God. Everybody in Deborah, because everybody in Deborah loves him. So he was just mine. He was all of us. That's why all of us are here today. I have a lot to say, hard to say it. No parent will like to bury a son. It's not what it ought to be. Um, I must thank my mother for a reason sake and become what she have become today because my mother was the same way. Very given, very kind hearted woman. And Seke inherited a lot of that. So that's who you have become. He couldn't help who you have become because of my mother. And it's a lot to say, it's hard to say what I have to say. It's hard to come out. And thankful for my daughter and first of all I get a lot of support family everybody and there's so much people overseas who support me who make this happen for me today I should thank them very much and and, and my daughter who made the journey with me today so this is Sydney the third I'm Sydney the second <laughs> and this is my daughter Sydney the third and I should thank everyone for coming out to support me and show him today. And his mother who loves him dearly. Thanks again. That's what we said. It's never easy. But we pray for God's strength in this stormy season. At this time we would have a song, I would invite Josh to come and do a song.
find in Jesus Christ. Unending love, amazing grace. He's a God who would not give us what we would deserve. He extends grace to every person. And he gives grace, multiplied grace, even in the midst of all that you go through, all the difficulties of life. God will give you what you need to make it through. That's the God that we serve. Amen. At this time, we're going to open the floor for tributes and remarks from family and friends. So we invite you to use the, the mic right there to make your tribute. So we're going to open the floor for a short while. So make it quick, short and quick. Those of you who want to give tributes or make remarks concerning the life of Sherwin. So we invite you now to do that.
Vicky and myself and my sister, all of us grew up together, so I do it very hard. So I'm going to just sing this song on behalf of my family, hoping that we will find strength in this time of need. When you're weary, feeling
Good afternoon, everyone. This is the day that the Lord has made, and let us just rejoice and make ourselves happy in it. With our weather, brother, gone one day, we had to try the same journey too. I just want the bereaved family to be strong in the Lord. For in the Lord there is fullness of joy, and at the right hand there is pleasure forevermore. I believe that Snake will like to leave this for them. He said, do not grieve for me, my dear ones, now that I have gone away. I only step quietly through the door to the dawn of a brighter day. If you could see the beauty of the garden I'm walking through, if you could feel a touch of his hand, you would want to walk here too. If you could see the sunshine with no dark shadows lurking there, if you could know the joy supreme I find with my Lord so dear. Where pain no more can touch me, where no sorrow can ever be, you will be glad I slip away to this beautiful land of eternity. I'll be waiting for you, my dear ones. I'll be watching day by day. And I'll ask our Father to guide you, lest you flattered along the way. So now the day is over, and the night is drawing nigh. I pray you to find it only a step, a step where walk my precious Lord and I. And I would like to leave this song to Kenan and Father and family on the behalf of the Mackie family from Josh Dorm. Sometimes I feel so lonely.
it broke my heart and I'm just gonna say just keep on keeping on say can may your soul rest in perfect peace good afternoon everyone for those of you who don't know who I am my name is Edison Young and my wife Eileen B.B. Young is right there. And on behalf of us both, and our daughter, Victoria, we would like to um, extend condolences to Sid and the entire Bob's family and Seke's mom. Seke, I knew Seke from Seke was a baby. Seke was born one year and 14 days after our daughter, our first and only daughter. And um, they both grew up together and they were like family. And um, Seke, one thing I've heard it said so many times here and I'd like to repeat it, Seke was humble. Humility was one of his best character traits. And he was very, very respectful. And um, I was in New York when I heard that Seke passed away and I was saying to myself, I hope Sid and those who are planning the family hold on until I get back. And thank God uh, I'm here to show my respect and pay tribute to Seke and may his soul rest in peace and uh, I pray for young people because I couldn't help but thinking that all of the young fruits are dropping off the tree and the old ones are still around and it's not easy for a parent to bury a child but Sid and Seke's mom if she's hearing me continue to be strong because as we've been hearing this morning and this afternoon, God's grace is more than sufficient for all of us, especially in our times of need. So CK, continue to rest in peace. Thank you. 
courage to stand up here this afternoon after we had many conversations but we never discussed it. And I am supposed to say goodbye. We are supposed to say goodbye. But I hold fast that God will give us more than we can carry. beloved brother. Every day I think of you, still in disbelief, wondering if this is all true. Mom only had the two of us, now it's only me here. You passed so suddenly, never got to say goodbye. Getting that call so early in the morning from mom to hear the world sick is dead. I couldn't comprehend the thought of my brother being gone forever. My body went numb, I was in shock, I still am in shock. We were both quiet and shy, didn't express our feelings often. But one thing we never forgot to say was I love you. Always call to check in on me, your nephew and niece. Our messenger and WhatsApp call, video call will always end with you saying, I love you sis, and I will respond, love you too bro. I will cherish all the memories we had growing up. We were planning for you to come and stay with me for a while, but I guess God had other plans for you. It's hard to say rest in peace and your name in the same sentence. So for now, fly high with the angels and say hi to mommy. I uh, thank you for those wonderful tributes. And I think before we have the eulogy, let us change our position. Let's stand and sing a chorus.
So I expect everybody to get to know who I am, but most of everybody. For the few of you who don't know who I am, I'm a sixth brother, and I'm a freaking uncle. Um, so before I forget, um, I want to say thank you um, for the love and support. Thank you for the condolences and the sympathies. Thank you for coming out here today and showing your love for Seike. Thank you for all those contributing anyway. But financially, you send flowers. You have a, a shoulder to cry on. Um, we really appreciate it. And it means more to us than, than we could express in words. So, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, if, I, if I read the eulogy, um, there's some anecdotes about what's taking life and his, his brief existence. Um, Seke, when he was born, his, both his parents were teenagers. Um, and um, my mother made a great big fuss about it. She didn't like it at all, but she came around and she eventually accepted Seke as a member of the family. Um, but, Ten months later, Kenan's mother came and told him she was praying for him again, so all hell broke loose. That she did not like at all. So, that, that was 1987. So she said, you know what? I'm getting your plane ticket and I'm shipping you off to America. You could give them problems over there, but I have enough problems with you. So, by 1988, he was, was in the States. So, this, the kids didn't grow up with him initially, but just by coming back, you get to know them and they get to know him as a father. So, just start, just start out, I wouldn't mention that. Um, Shawan Lennon Bob, affectionately known as Seke, was born on December 26, 1986, to Sydney Bob and Carmela Arrington. Passed on September 5th, 2022. Um, Seke moved to Dubai when he was four, four years old, to live with his late paternal grandmother, Georgina Bob who loved and raised him as, as her own son until she passed away in 2009. So he kept attending Dubai Government School until he was 15, 15 years old. He worked as a painter for a number of years, but for the most part, he was self-employed and worked in his father's business. So he had many admirable qualities. He was quiet, Respectful, humble, soft spoken, loving, kind hearted. I'll show you how this many times from all the speakers I've heard previously. For those of you, for those of you who are privileged to, to meet him, she would have encountered some of all of these qualities he possessed, which made him very, very easy to love. When his grandmother passed away, no one who lived with us can assume responsibility and uh, became like a mother figure to him. The, the true essence of Seike, the true who he really was, came true when, when, um, when Nola was when Nola was sick. He, pray, he was the primary caregiver for at one time before we had somebody to take care of, 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 of Nola. And um, he, he would prepare her, her meals, he would bathe her, did her laundry, made sure that, he, um, that she took her medication. 
And he did this and, and never complained. Um, when she died, that, when Noda died, um, Seke is not an expressive person. He hardly talked about his feelings. So, but when Noda died, you could only imagine you know, the, the suffering um, he, he must have. The stuff he must have gone through. His time and out was way too short. But he sure left a mark. When our loved one dies, we hope they rest in peace. But Seke lived in peace. Can't emphasize that enough. He lived in peace. What more can you ask of a person? The good book says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Rest easy, Seke. Your job is done. We will see you on the other side, my friend, my nephew. Um, he, so, he survived by his mother, Carmel Arrington Hall, father, Sidney Bob, Stepmother Ingrid Bino, stepfather Willie Hall, grandmother Tommy Chuit, brother Kenan, sisters Sydney, Shanice, Raquel, Kamisha Arrington, Mercury, Aunt Judith, Jennifer, Sharon, Ivani, Omega Arrington. Those are nice sisters. I'm reading this wrong. <laughs> um, no, aunts, Judy, Jennifer, Sharon, um, Ivani, Omega Arrington, um, Karen Arrington, Jeanette Arrington, Uncle Brian, John Lee, Spanky, Prakken, Sergio, Arthur, Desmond, Devon Arrington, Lemerick Arrington, Great Aunts, Margaret Baptiste, Lovis Baptiste, Nicolette Arrington, Ned, Great Uncle, Berkeley Arrington, Nashawn Arrington, Alice Arrington, Tony Arrington, Bonnie Chewitt, and family. Cousins, too numerous to mention, in SVG, BVI, Canada, and the USA. Close friend, the son James, the Arrington family, Chewitt, Baptist, and Coffee families of South Rivers. Thank you. Thank you, Sergio. At this time, we have another hymn, Take My Hand. Precious Lord, take my hand.
Now this afternoon, I just want to speak to you for a very short while from two passages of Scripture. The first one is taken from James chapter 4, verse 14, and the next is taken from Psalm 90, verse 5 to verse 6. And it reads, Why? You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes. In the book of Psalms, Moses is speaking about God. He says, oh God, you sweep man away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning Though in the morning it springs up new, by evening it is dry and withered. This is the word of the Lord. Now this afternoon I want to talk to you on the idea that tomorrow is not guaranteed. Live for God today. Tomorrow is not guaranteed live for God today. Now, just a couple of weeks ago, we have been shocked by the news that some persons from Clear Valley left home to go to a funeral. And on their way to that funeral, five persons met their death. They were not planning to die. They were going to a funeral and ended up having people to organize their own funeral. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. Live for God today. And just this week, we heard of the guy Suraj Bakas driving one of those sugar trucks that crashed into the Adams building at Honorsville. He was doing his business as normal and he thought that he would have made it to his destination, but he never made it. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. Live for God today. And one of the points I want us to understand today is that life is uncertain. Death can come at any time and to whomever. Life is uncertain. Any one of us can die at any time. James tells us that life is like a vapor. Life is like a morning mist that soon vanishes. And Psalms tells us of the nature of life. He says, we are like new grass that springs up in the morning and by evening we are withered and dry. That is the reality of life. There are no guarantees about tomorrow. None of us have any guarantee that we would make it tomorrow. We can be strong and healthy right now, but could easily be a corpse tomorrow. In the words of a song penned by Michael Jackson, he says, Gone too soon, here one day, gone one night. Like a sunset, dying with the rise of the moon, gone too soon that is the reality of the life that we live life is frail and the thing with death is that many of us can die at any time and there are so many ways unexpected ways that we can die just earlier this year a cousin of mine was driving, going to work on a Saturday morning. He had just 
the night before celebrating his mother's birthday and we had a big family get together. And as he drove down VG Highway, persons who were watching said they saw the car starting to lose control. And when they saw that he stopped the car by the side of the road, they were happy because the car never ran off the road, the car never got into an accident. But when they opened the door and took him out, when the people came, he was pronounced dead. Up to now, they cannot even identify a cause of death. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. Live for God today. Just two years ago, I had another cousin. He was cutting his fence and he complained of feeling dizzy and he went to lie down. Later, they took him to the clinic and a couple of hours after, he was a dead man. Strong, healthy, but death came and snatched him. I heard of another guy who was in his bath taking a shower and he just collapsed and died. Some time ago, I was going through Facebook and there were two brothers from Jamaica. They jumped into a lake and none of them made it out alive. They both drowned. That is the reality of life. And there are so many unexpected ways in which death comes at us. And death often comes without warning. And that is why we have to understand today that life at best is very brief. It is like the falling of a leaf. None of us is guaranteed tomorrow. And that is why we have to live for God today. Now it may be disturbing to hear all of this, but it is a reality of life. Life is uncertain. Death can come at any time and to whomever. Life can be short because that's what the Bible says. Life is a vapor. A vapor is short-lived. You see the vapor at one moment and a few minutes later, it is gone. It's like the steam that comes out of your cup of tea in the morning. And you see it for a while and then it is gone. And life is like that. Life disappears into thin air if you want to put it like that. Life is brief. Life is uncertain. None of us are guaranteed tomorrow. Live for Christ today. And as it relates to the duration of our lives, how long we will live, none of us know. It is out of our hands. When we will die, it is out of our hands. Which one of us are going to die next? None of us know. That is the uncertainty of life. Nobody is guaranteed tomorrow. And that is why we have to live for God today. Because we would all have to answer to God one day. Every single one of us would have to stand before God one day. Because in the book of Hebrews it says... It is appointed unto man once to die. And after death comes the judgment. He says that every one of us, we have an appointment with death. But death is not the end. Because at the end of death, no matter how we die, we are going to be raised and we have to stand before God and give an account of our lives. We have to stand before the great judge, the God who sees everything that we've done and we are doing. We have to stand before him. First Peter 4 and 5 warns us, 
that God is ready to judge the living and the dead. And no lawyer can help us in heaven. No lawyer can help us when we stand before that judge because that judge will have all the evidence before him. Revelation chapter 20 verse 15 declares anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life will be cast in the lake of fire. Matthew chapter 13 informs us that angels will throw them into the blazing fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And this would be for all eternity. Eternal separation from God where there will be no hope, no possibility of getting up. That is the reality that we have to live with. After death, there is a judgment. After death, every one of us have to stand before God. And if we are not right with God, then each one of us who are not right with God would be cast in the lake of fire forever and ever. That is the reality. So in light of that, what does God want of you and me? Moses, in contemplation of the nature of life, the brevity of life, he asked God in Psalm chapter 19, he said, teach us to number our days that we might present you a heart of wisdom. Peter tells us to live our lives in light of eternity. And the book of Amos tells us, prepare to meet thy God. Prepare to meet thy God. What God wants in the time that we have today is that we prepare to meet our maker. Prepare to meet your maker because tomorrow is not guaranteed. And that is why you have to live for God today because none of us knows if we're going to make it till tomorrow. And I want you to know this afternoon that the God that I'm talking about, He is a God who is rich in grace, a God who is a merciful God, a God who is willing to forgive us, every one of us of our sins. No matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, God is a merciful God and God is a gracious God. He said in his word, and the verse that you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Verse 17 says, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved and what God wants of you and me is that today while we have the time today because tomorrow is not guaranteed that we surrender our lives to him that we live for God live for God people live for God Tomorrow is not guaranteed and there is no repentance in the grave. There is no repentance in the grave. If you die without Jesus Christ, there is no hope for you. There is absolutely no hope for you if you die without Jesus Christ. And that is why the word says today, if you shall hear my voice, harden not your heart. Behold, now is the accepted time. Tomorrow won't be too late because tomorrow is not guaranteed. Live for God today because you don't know. I don't know if I will be next. You don't know if you will be next. And remember we say that death comes without warning. And death is no respect of persons. I've seen young persons die. I've seen old persons die. I've seen persons who are healthy die. I've seen persons who had a lot of plans for the rest of their lives die. 
We also know in the book of Luke of this rich man who when his barn, his, his, his field brought forth plentiful, he said, I will tear down these small barns and build bigger ones. And I will say to my soul, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said tonight, thou fool, tonight thy soul is required of thee. And whose shall all this be? Live for God, people. Live for God. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. Give your life to God. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. You might think that you have life now, but death can cut you down at any time. And I'm saying this afternoon that God is a gracious God. There is no sin that God will forgive you today. God's grace is greater than all your sins. He has grace and he's rich offering mercy to you. Paul said, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of which I am the worst. And Paul was saying, I am the worst of sinners. And if God can save me, God can save any one of us. And God is opening the door, giving you the opportunity today to surrender to him, to live for God. And I'm going to encourage you today, live for God people live for God because tomorrow is not guaranteed and as I end I just want to read this life on earth is like a vapor at any time life can crumble like a piece of paper no guarantees of tomorrow or even later we always have to be ready to meet our maker Death respects no one. There is no telling when it would come. Death seizes the old and snatches the young. Death can cut us down in the height of life's fun. Death, from it, we could never run. God is offering you mercy and grace today. Answer God's call. Don't delay. Your eternal destiny is at stake. Don't play. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. Live for Christ today. Live for Christ today. Live for Christ today. Your tomorrow is not guaranteed. May God bless us for his name's sake. I just want to pray with you. And I just want to pray with the family. So if you're family, just stand and I just pray with pray for you at this time. Father. You are the God of all comfort. And God, there are times that we don't understand why things happen. But no, God, we know that you are the sovereign God. You are in control. And God, we trust you because we know that you know what's best. And God, even if it is hurting right now for this family, God, for the loss of your loved one, Sherwin, God, we pray that you would minister comfort to them right now, God. We pray for a special touch right now, God, in the name of Jesus, God. God, I pray that you provide people around them to support, to continue to encourage them, Father, in the name of Jesus. And God, we pray, oh God, that the lessons that we've learned from his life, God, will live. And one such lesson, God, is that there is no guarantee of a tomorrow. And I pray, oh God, that every member of his family, Lord, would surrender their hearts and lives to you. 
God, we pray, oh God, that you provide for them. We pray, oh God, for your continued protection of their lives. We pray, oh God, for your blessings and your favor upon their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, we have the closing prayer by Monica Malcolm. And this will be followed by the recessional hymn in the suite, by and by. And as we leave to go to the, uh, the cemetery, and as we do the recessional, we ask that you give respect and allow the family to go out first. So, at this time, we have the closing prayer by Monica Malcolm. Good afternoon, everyone, and let me thank the pastor for delivering a message today. Amen? Amen, Amen. and uh, I am hoping that this word, through the Spirit, would have been radiating on the outside because all of us need to get the message. You see? How many persons are here? One person is here. And today we might be with our friends because we want to block out certain things, but when the rubber hits the road, it's only one person in that coffin. At this time, let's stand in the presence of Almighty God as we pray. Again, on behalf of Kimon, who is not here, she'd like to send her condolences to the Bob family and all the Arrington and all those who mourn today. Heavenly Father, we praise you, we bless your name, we magnify and glorify you. We adore you because you said in everything to give thanks. And this afternoon, although we are hurting, we are comforted to know that in John you said, I am the resurrection and the life. And he that believeth in me, though he die, yet he shall live. We are comforted to know that, hey, once we give ourselves to you, this sleep will only be asleep because one day, one day you will burst the eastern sky. And we would be reunited with our loved ones who love you. Sadly, Lord, we recognize that there is another tune. That there will be some who would have rejected this kind offer of giving their lives to you. Father God, in the name of Jesus today, even before we get to this place of interment, I am praying, God, that somebody on the outside, somebody on the inside who has not yet given their life to Christ, before, before the evening closes, will think of our own mortality because we are not here to turn stone. And as the pastor said, every one of us must, must, stand before God for himself and herself. And so God, in the name of Jesus, I'm begging you for somebody outside who need to say, I yield to you, God. Not because this is a funeral, it doesn't matter. Because once your name is there, your presence is there, and you always come in with a blessing. So Father God, read somebody today Somebody who this sermon may have been the last sermon. God, please read somebody today and help that they would give their life to Christ. Because to live 10 years, 20 years, 30, 60 years without having accepted Jesus is a waste. What a waste. But Father God, I thank you that you are still calling. That you are still merciful. And as a pastor, remind us it doesn't matter what state you come, that you always accept. So thank you again. Continue to cover these families in the name of Jesus. 
And Father, even as we travel from this place to the place of entombment, give us traveling mercies. And on the road, help that our people, their behavior would be such that they are respectful of the dead and the family. We praise you, God, that you are such a faithful and God fa good family. And God, of now, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you and we magnify your name in Jesus' name. I'm 
Come on, 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 come
You're not taking a good camera for the trumpet is sung, and the dead give will be raised in perishable, and Take will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable being clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written come true: Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? For as much as it pleased Almighty God in His great mercy to take unto Himself the soul of our brother Seke, we therefore commit his body to the ground. Give me brother soul, let me give me brother soul. <laughs> no. Like seriously? Oh, 
when I get there, when I get there, I will sing a song. When I get there, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. When I get there, when I get there, when I get there, I will sing and shout. I'm going up, 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 that's all I know, I'm going up, that's all I know, I'm going up, to the city, where mansions are prepared for me, I'm going up, 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 that's all I know, I'm going up, that's all I know, I'm going up.
By the streams of water flowing, there is a star in Bethlehem light. Good evening, good evening, good evening, say good evening, slumber, sleep until the morning. By the streets of water flowing, there is a star in Bethlehem rise. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Good evening. We just come to say okay, good then. evening. Okay, then. Nice. Let me pay for the video. 